So the final film I want to talk to you about tonight was one that I first heard of when I saw a movie called Los Angeles Plays Itself when I lived in Los Angeles. Los Angeles Plays Itself is a very long um, documentary where somebody talks about the history and story of Los Angeles as seen in the movies. This movie is called Miracle Mile. Here is the beautiful Kino Blu-ray of Miracle Mile. Miracle Mile is set in the what? Miracle Mile of Los Angeles. It is an apocalyptic ro rom romance. I was going to say romantic comedy. It's not really a romantic comedy. It's an apocalyptic romance. Um, and surely must have been a, an um, inspiration for Seeking a Friend for the End of the World, which is a movie that fucking devastated me. If you want to see me crying, go look up my review of um, Seeking a Friend for the End of the World because I was crying when that movie ended. And then I cried as I recorded that video because it made me cry so hard. This movie didn't make me cry as hard. Um, but it made me feel all the feelings. And as soon as it was over, I rewatched it. Like, I've watched it twice tonight, um, but I watched it the second time with the audio commentary because it, it was great. And um, it has a Tangerine Dream score, and I'm just here to tell you that all movies are improved with Tangerine Dream scores. Tangerine Dream scores are the greatest scores. All scores should be Tangerine Dream scores. I firmly believe that Tangerine Dream were possibly the greatest, you know, accompaniment of music two films ever and everything is improved by a tangerine dream score but especially if you want tension there's nothing like the tension of like near death heightened by tangerine dream that is like if i'm dying if like i know i'm dying i will pull up a tangerine dream score and i will be like play this until i'm dead because it will it's the perfect music for dying so the plot of miracle mile is that Anthony Edwards is on his, um, he's visiting Los Angeles. He's at the La Brea Tar Pits. And he finally, at the age of 30, has met the love of his life, played by Mayor Winningham. Um, she is a, a waitress at the Johnny's Diner. If you know Los Angeles, you know the Johnny's Diner is on Fairfax by LACMA in the Miracle Mile. Um, that is, it hasn't been running in a jillion years, but they use it in movies. And in this case, they, it was a big set sequence in this film. Um, she lives in Park La Brea. I used to have some friends that live in Park La Brea. Park La Brea is a very big, um, one of the biggest, I think, private um, um, apartment complexes in the Los Angeles area. So they meet, meet cute in the La Brea Tar Pits. They, she has to go to work. He's supposed to come back um, in a few hours at, to meet her after midnight, and they're going to go on an official date. However, some shit happens power goes out and he does not wake up on time to meet her next thing you know it's 4 a.m he gets to the diner it's too late she's gone home she said fuck it um he leaves her a phone a phone message on a payphone. he goes to get back in the diner picks up an la weekly or a um, usa today or something the phone rings he goes back to the um payphone to see what it is this is one of these movies that can only take place when it takes place because of payphones. it is um, a soldier in a bunker in North Dakota who's trying to call his father to apologize for a big falling out that they had because the bomb's about to drop. Um, and Anthony Edwards is like, what? And he doesn't believe it at first. But then, this is the movie. That's what's happening. So the rest of the film is him uh, telling a few people and the, out, the um, outcome of telling these handful of people that are the people that you would meet at a late night diner in LA at 4 a.m. Um, everybody when they hear it, has a different kind of reaction of how you see the leaders and the panickers. You also see almost everybody has somebody that they want to get to save to because they're attempting to get to Antarctica. Is that going to happen? He's going to go get his girl. Her name is Julie. Played by Mayor Winningham. Um, there's a moment, I'm going to kind of spoil, there's a moment where her, her grandparents, I think it's supposed to be, finally get back together. They haven't talked to each other for 15 years. And instead of trying to get off to Antarctica with the two of them, like they plan, they're going to go to Cantor's and have their favorite meal and just re reconnect after the last 15 years of not talking to each other um, as the world's ending. And it is the most romantic little moment. You're like, yes, go to Cantor's, eat that food, get some, um, what is that delicious cookie called? Oh, God. They have those good cookies there. Rugula. Get yourself a rugula. It'll be great. Eat some pickles. If I were in the L.A. proper and the world was about to end, I would also go to Cantor's. If I was in the Valley, I would go to Bob's Big Boy. Those are the two best places in all of L.A. World's ending. You go there. You eat some food. You're good. So 
the rest of the film is Anthony Edwards' characters and Mayor Winningham's characters attempting to get on this helipad to get to LAX to get to Antarctica. But they keep getting separated. And all of these horrible sort of After Hours-esque things keep happening to separate them. Things with strangers, things that are good, things that are bad. Um, death and destruction. But it's a slow burn. So, you know, the first 15 minutes or so is their sort of cute meet. Then it's him in the diner trying to explain to these people what he overheard. Then it's him trying to get to her. Then it's him trying to get a helicopter pilot and all of this stuff. And it's, it's just like slow and then it builds and then it builds and then it builds. And then it builds to this thing where it's, it's morning and chaos has broken out. And the last 15 minutes of this film is the most tense, chaotic, in just, ugh. My God, you're just like, you want him to get back to her so bad and you know the world's going to end and you don't even care because you know the world's going to end, but you don't want the world to end until they get back together because the world needs to end with them together because you know they're supposed to be together because they have this intense chemistry. And that should be like the lowest stakes because they've just met, right? But the chemistry and the setup to their relationship is so well built that you're like, fuck everybody else. Get these two people back together oh my god, they need to die together. And and uh, in true fashion, spoilers, uh, much like Seeking a Friend for the End of the World, much like Melancholia, this film fucking goes for it. And it is romantic and bleak as shit because they get back together, they love each other, they're going to die together, it's great, and then poof, white light, end of the world. And I, I fucking love an end of the world movie that actually just goes for it and ends the world because the world's going to end and we're all going to die and I want to see that in my cinema. So um, I really loved this movie. I was told I was going to love this movie. I actually had it on my Amazon wish list because I almost blind bought it for Christmas several years in a row. It came out in 2015, this uh, Blu-ray. I kept not blind buying it. And then finally when I was wandering around Videodrome this last time, I, I saw the Blu-ray just sitting there and I was like, ah, I'm going to watch it finally. And I wish I just blind bought it because I'm going to go buy it anyways. But I guess it, it works out because I, you know, have now supported Videodrome and I'm going to buy the DVD, uh, Blu-ray. And um, it's just such a good movie. It's like literally everything I want in a movie. It's romantic. There's a diner. People die. There is really intense, like, there's a sequence where these, these cops get lit on fire on accident and there's just like bodies burning, but it's built it's filmed so beautifully that you're like oh these bodies are burning but I can't look away um there's matte paintings there's chaos there's a like third man homage where they're in a sewer there's um tangerine dream score I got to bring that back up because like every movie is better as I said with a tangerine dream score it's I have I just it's one of those movies where I can't believe I hadn't seen this movie but I'm so glad that I saw this movie and there's a whole canon of these like crazy nighttime movies that I love um there is this one there's into the night there's um after hours there's night of the comet there's that uh what is it um modern girls there's like a whole whole bunch of these movies in the 80s that take place all at night a little bit to the 70s too if you're gonna look at American graffiti um but I love the chaotic ones where uh, it's just chaos reigns and the, I just, the last 15 minutes of this movie, my heart was pounding, I was sad, and then the very, very end, much like Seeking uh, a Friend for the End of the World, the very end where everything is falling apart and, and, and they're all panicking about that. Instead of thinking about that, they manage to reconnect back together and realize that the only thing that matters is, is the two of them in this moment. There's nothing else that you can, you can deal with. There's, there's nothing but you and this person. And... It's so beautiful because that's what connections are about is you and this person and the entire world could be falling apart around you but you found your person and that is like my fucking favorite kind of movies where people find their people. Um, it just heightened when it's like they find your people and then the world explodes. Um, but it's, glor it's glorious and I love it. So this movie's fantastic. I cannot recommend it enough. Um, it's one of the best movies I've ever seen. Um, it is everything I want in a movie. Um, there's so many great just one-off characters. This is one of those movies that takes uh, care to make sure that everything that is presented to you, every visual, every extra, every anything, every piece of dialogue is so expertly crafted that there is not a piece of fat on this film. There is not a piece of thing that is not presented at you that has a purpose. Everything is purposeful. Everything is 
dictated. Everything is gorgeous, expertly calibrated film. I cannot believe it's not more well known and more beloved. And um, it may be dated because of some of the hair or whatever, but like that's what makes it a time capsule. That's why I fucking love movies. They should all look like they came from the year they were made if they're set in that year. Um, oh, and the neon. The only thing that's missing is pie. There's no pie in this movie. Otherwise, it would be, you know, it's like a 99.9 .9 because there's no pie. But it is set in a diner, and there is coffee in one of those beautiful diner crafts. Um, I just love it. So I love this movie. I'm going to never return this to Videodrome, except I will. I'll give this to Videodrome. So if you're in Atlanta, go to Videodrome and, like, rent this immediately as soon as I return it on Friday. And um, you'll love it, I swear, except that I've totally spoiled the entire movie, and I hope you've or watching this after you've seen the movie. Um, I'll put spoilers in the title. This is Miracle Mile. It's uh, written and directed by Steve DeGernet. I didn't say that. I'm sorry. I didn't even talk about him. Um, he also did Cherry 3000, which I have not seen, or Cherry 2000, Cherry something, um, and a handful of other uh, television. And uh, just if you're only going to do one big movie that everyone remembers, this is the big movie that everyone should remember. It's so good. Um, I really want to do, like I said, a triple feature of this and Melancholia and Staking a Friend for the End of the World and just like have it sponsored by Kleenex and everyone can cry. And I'll be like, hey guys, this is the kind of movies that I love where everything is sad and beautiful and depression and romance and the end of the world explodes. Yay! <laughs> like, someday I'll get to do that triple feature. If you want me to play that triple feature at your movie theater, just let me know and I'll, uh, I'll come curate it.